are such an asshole. How are you kids doing? AssholeConsulting.com. We have a pretty good uh, request, request here. And we'll delve into this little world. Hi, Aaron. 18 year old living in one of the richest counties in America. 1300 SAP, AP, SAT, AP credits, and DE credits in the easy stuff. I know college is a scam. I want to be making money now. Everyone else is signing up for retard schools and B tier med and law school programs. How are you applying for law school at 18 or med school? You go um, uh, undergrad, uh, pre med, but what, everyone's going right to law school? Always enjoyed physical labor and would enjoy being in the trades provided. I got one that pays eighty to a hundred thousand a year. Oh, you can we can why? Oh, do be dabby dabby do. Look, hey guys, guys, look over here. The eighteen-year-old wants to make six figs. Yeah, he just wants it. Okay, dipshit. Uh, the only way you're gonna make eighty to a hundred k is if you get into a highly skilled trade. Uh, but more likely if you become an entrepreneur. And I'm gonna go into how you can achieve that. Uh, but by highly skilled, I mean uh, the classical example, you can do this if you want, is underwater welding. Because not only do you know have, to have to know how to weld, you have to learn how to scuba and weld as well. All right, so there's some of these very unique, lots of training, lots of schooling, lots of death uh, that you can do. Um, and then I looked up a couple of, you know, highest paying trades and all that. and. Uh, some of these lists are bullshit, so I'm going to go through one of them and kind of give you some pointers there. But knock this shit all oh, well, I want to make six figs. Well, you better be fucking ready to work for it. You better be really fucking ready to work for it. Um, and I don't blame you for wanting to get out of college and, and make the six figs, and, but, I'll, you know, this already, so I want to make six figs. Okay, whenever I hear somebody, six figs, I want to, like, I sense dude, I smell dude, bro. I smell dude, bro. You don't seem to necessarily be this because you're willing to work with your hands. But, you know, it just let's temper our expectations, shall we? Indeed Jobs, uh, Indeed.com, uh, says that it's possible as there are dozens of plumbing, electrical, and HVAC jobs toting to be 100,000 plus jobs. Well, I want to know if they're all conspiring and offer fairy tales to get applicants. Yes, yes, they, yes, that is true. Uh, before I start an apprenticeship or any one direction, or is this a function of shortage of skilled labor? That's my best guess. I mean, it depends. Uh, again, we'll talk about it here, but if you're willing to go out to the middle of the desert or go work in the uh, Alaskan oil fields, yes. But that's what they're paying you for is go work in Edmonton, work at Fort McMurray, where it's, I think it got, what was it, Saskatchewan? Minus 45 centigrade yesterday. Um, that's what you're really getting paid for. Uh, best trade to go with all the factors of the future consider. All right, so let's just talk basic economics here. <clears throat> the most reliable list I found is here. You could, I would maybe try pay scale, look at their hourly wage, go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but here are the ones kind of goes from bottom to top. You got a marine mechanic or boat mechanic working on engines. Service tech, automotive, auto mechanic. Uh, I know a guy, he went to Dunwoody, makes a very handsome wage. And they're saying median annual income, 38,000. I think that's a little bit low. Welder, 39,000. Um, I think that's a little bit low. Auto body repairman, 40,000. Mason worker, 41. Carpenter, 44. Licensed practical nurse. I don't know why nursing is in here. I don't know if that's really a trade. I think it's more about profession, if that makes sense. Any difference? Heavy equipment operator, forty-five thousand. Um, here's one I do know for a fact: really good diesel mechanic. That would be very good if you became a diesel mechanic. That would not be the worst. I know several diesel me uh, mechanics, and that's good. Commercial driver, no. Uh, that CDL stuff. Oh, I'll just go drive truck. No, no, no. Um, that's that's not. That gets complicated because you got to have your own rig and you got to work for the man. I don't. Know. I, I would not advise that. Plumbers, definitely. Electrician, definitely. 50,000 plus. And that's you working for uh, a guy who runs the company. Home inspector, doubt it. Nope. Don't fall for that one. They say, oh, they make 58,000. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, I know home inspectors, and they do make that money 
Um, but it's it's not an actual trade. Architectural and civil drafter, no, no. Any kind of architect, landscape, nope, mm -mm, nope. Aviation maintenance tech, uh, 60,000, yes, because it's engines, you're working on engines, but the airline industry is highly susceptible to the economy. So everyone needs it in an ironic sense when a recession hits, Auto mechanics go up in demand because people are going to repair the cars because they get new ones. Aviation mechanics, because no one's flying. No one's traveling anymore. Boil maker, yes. Might want to get in the union on that one. Here, landscape designer. Fuck that bullshit. That is bullshit. You don't go into landscape design. Dental hygienist, that's a, I think that's a trade. I would consider that a trade. That's a good one, too. I have a dentist friend who's like, they can't find enough. That's a that's a good one. Construction manager, no. This is where I'm going. I'm going to go major in construction management. You can become a construction manager. You can make eighty nine thousand a year, but that assumes you've been working on the site for at least a decade and you have the experience. Then you go and get your degree, and then you go into management. Electronics engineer, yes. And then that's the the end of the list there. All right. <clears throat> now we can go through. If it sounds like if it sounds fun, landscape design, it's bullshit. If it sounds easy, home inspector, bullshit. Architecture, bullshit. All right? But if it's fixing engines, you get dirty like a plumber does, or you get zapped like an electrician does, some of their cars more and more uh, specialized skills, the better. What really determines it, and I've come up with my little list here, how you make your six figs is not so much the type of tradesman you become, and some will eke out more than others, right? But it's what kind of tradesman? Not, not, not in terms of your skill, but your professionalism, and how far you're willing to travel, and the uh, extraneous uh, circumstances by which you're working. So let's go through it. First, location. When the Bakken oil field was booming in 2013 to 2015, you had all these dipshit East Coasters who were too busy growing their beards out, eating avocado and toast over in Brooklyn. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't dare go to North Dakota in North Dakota winter or North Dakota summer. Why? Because they're pussies. Right? But at any time, you could have walked right out there, started making high fives, low sixes, if you really wanted to. Right? I have a, a, another guy I know worked in the Bakken oil field. He made enough money paying for a house for cash and a truck and he pissed it all away. Uh, but if you're willing to go to Fort McMurray, you're willing to go in Australia, it's kind of, I mean, on the opposite side of the planet. But if you're willing to go work in crappy environments, cold environments, hot environments, sweaty environments, humid environments, you could go and make the money. Kind of, again, if you're willing to go underwater and do the scuba diving welding, all right? So if you're willing to go to where the work is, that's going to dramatically help yourself out. Out here in Vegas, there's a housing boom. Do you mind? Oh, but I like living at home with my parents. Well, fuck you then. Enjoy making your $12 an hour at Burger King or wherever it is. You got to go to where the work is. So that's number one. Second thing, shift differential. Are you willing to work the third shift? And not only uh, shift differential, are you willing to work overtime? Especially if you get into the union, you get into the union, you get double, you start making some really good money. Matter of fact, I know it's not very a, a, really a trade, but akin to it. Uh, the police, man, if you, you're, especially young cops, you're signing up for those extra shifts because you got fuck all left to do. Like, yep, give me that, give me that double time pay, give me that time and a half pay. And uh, back when I worked security, we would, we would just like, yeah, let's go. Holiday pay and overtime pay, two and a quarter pay. And I was making about $18 an hour back in 1995, 96. That was a handsome wage. I paid for quarters of tuition, just working over a, a Christmas and Thanksgiving break because of all the overtime and holiday pay. So if you're willing to put in overtime as a young man or young woman, you can make a lot of money. Here's the main one. This is the main one. This won't guarantee you make 100000 but you can survive in your local area if you do this one thing, one thing only, okay? You show up on time, and you're sober, and here's the kicker, you finish the job, okay? Now, I know 
the who dang diggly danglies and the do dang diggly doos with their Polaris jackets and your standard white contractors. You guys can't show up on time, you can't show up sober, and the fuck if you could finish the job. This is where you could take a lesson from our Mexican brothers, who actually do show up on time, do get the job done, and they do it sober. And if that hurts your vagina, I'm terribly sorry, it's true. The Mexicans, I mean, dude, I have, <laughs> it's, because I, gutters, I'm I, still, to this day, I'm just trying to get gutters put on my house. Just trying to get gutters put on the house. Can't find someone to call you back. People say they're going to show up. They don't. They said they're going to show up an hour later. Where the fuck are you? Oh, sorry, little. No, fuck you, you cock. I read about one guy. He's like Vasily or Vladimir, some, some Russian douche. And, you know, man, just basic professional shit. Show up on time. Show up sober. Finish the fucking job. That right there. Then, then I think that's the main one I'd say right there that pushes you beyond whatever the stated median income is because you're no longer median. You are superior if you... What were the three things again? White tradesmen, show up on time, be sober, complete the job, right? You do that, you're in, I would say, the top 25%. Seriously. Especially nowadays with the economy going very well in the housing market. You, it is so hard to find... Contract is going to show. I can't even, I, I really do wish for a recession in some regards because then these cocky, arrogant sons of bitches would actually maybe show the fuck up on time and be professional men. You know, then, then hotel prices would go down, gas prices would go down, and could actually start staying in hotels again. Uh, anyway, if you do that, like I got a plumber, shows up on time, sober, gets the job done. Here's your check worth every fucking penny. Benjamin Franklin Plumbing back in the Twin Cities. They have an on-time guarantee, and they're expensive, but they show up on time. And if they don't, it's free. Or I think the, they waive the service fee or something like that. $300, the, the twice times I've had plumbing issues. There you go, boom, it's done. All right, Bob's Plumbing Hut, when Bob, when he's not too busy getting the vomit out of his uh, mullet, in his you know Polaris hat, jacket and hat, okay, then he finally drags his ass in, does a half-ass job, water's leaking all over the place. Yeah, then then I guess you will make average plumber money. But if you are, what were the what were the three again, boys and girls? On time, sober, finished job. You do that, you're sixty thousand dollars plus. And I would say working for somebody else. Then the final thing, the self-employment. That's where you're really going to make the money. Okay, you're going to have to be a highly skilled tradesman working in an in-demand area that's temporary. You know, the oil boom came and went. Uh, it's going to be hot. There's going to be mosquitoes. Oh, my God, the horse flies in North Dakota. Forget the mosquitoes, horse flies with, with stingers about that big. Um, murder, just murder. Uh, if you're willing to go out there, you're going to be in the Six Figs area. Okay. Dubai, that's another perfect, are you willing to go to Dubai? You can find some work out in Dubai. Um, you know, you got you to gotta be willing to go where, it, where you're in demand. I think even Dubai, it's tax free or something like that. I, you have to look it up. Uh, but if you really want to make the six figures as a, as a tradesman, the truth is you're not going to be a tradesman. You're going to be the owner of a trade company. You will run Bob's Plumbing. And not only will you run Bob's Plumbing, you will run it better than the other guys with the three principles that were again white guys with mullets from the northern suburbs of the Twin Cities, on time, sober, and finish the job. Those three principles, if you can instill that in your other workers, then you are making the six figures. Because then you have the, the, the guys, be it your mechanic shop, your plumbing shop, hell, Chimney sweeping, I always refer back to, I got the wood burning stove, I gotta clean that out every one or two years. In comes two guys, they're clean, boop, 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 they're done. It takes like 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, 120 bucks. Now admittedly, one guy was trained, so it's usually one guy they send 120 bucks. Okay, you pay out that guy his $30 an hour, whatever he's making, and you get the key, and you got overhead. But the value of that service is about $150 an hour, right? Uh, and why do I go with this group of 
uh, chimney sweepers because they're professional. They get the job done. And my, my, I had one guy, didn't show up on time, didn't do it. The thing is still clogged. Never, never will go with them ever again. But the professionals, I did. And you know what? You damn right it's worth 120 bucks for 45 minutes of your labor. So what you want to do, you go through the ranks. It really almost doesn't matter what you, I mean, it will matter to a certain extent. I mean, if you're just a regular sheet rocker, that's not going to be, you know, a carpenter, all right. Depends on how good skilled level you are. But plumbing, electrician, roofing, siding, uh, God almighty, there's room for competition there. Whatever in-demand trade you have, mechanic, whatever. And then you master that craft. And then maybe you take some classes in accounting online, free. Don't, don't pay for classes in accounting. Just learn to do accounting. Learn how to use QuickBooks. And you have a professional work ethic. And you show up on time, sober, and you get the job done right. That level of professionalism and quality will allow you then to start your own company. And then I write, yeah, okay, maybe you really did like plumbing. But now, you, no, no, you manage the plumbers. You train them in in your way. And then... Plumber Joe goes out, you pay him a good wage of $30 an hour, he's making his $60,000 a year, he's happy, you bill him out at $120, 30 of that goes to overhead, you're making $60 an hour off of Bob and Fred and Amy and Mike and Jessica and Steve. And then you just, and it's rolling in because now you're managing and that's how you make your six figures in the trades. That's how I've seen it done. It, Yes, yes, you can You can be an employee. You can be working for someone else and make six figs in hot markets and construction booms and oil booms and other type of booms. Um, but you're not going to be, well, adjusted for cost of living. You're not going to be making $100,000 working for the union unless you put in a lot of overtime and you're in New York and you got to go through the union and you got to pay your union dues and all that. Uh, you're not going to be making 100000 Working in you know Kansas City as your average carpenter, you make a handsome wage, but you're not going to be making the six figs. But if you want six figs, first thing, you show up on time, sober, get the job done. Second thing, go into a trade that's very highly in demand. Third thing, go to where it's in demand the most and just be mobile. Go wherever you want. Be willing to work overtime and shift differential. There's your six figures without self-employment. If you want to make six figs on the easy, and it's still not going to be easy, it's still going to take a lot of work. You become self-employed. You become a master tradesman at whatever it is you prefer to do. And then you start learning a little bit about business. Okay, don't go to school. Don't go to the Carlson School of Management to learn how to run business. Right? Learn some accounting. Learn how to set up an LLC. If you have questions, contact Asshole Consulting. Very simple. I'll handhold you through it. You'll understand. It's very simple. Uh, you do a little bit of accounting. Get a payroll service. Not hard just foreign, just new, and then you are on top of quality management like no other. And you charge people for quality because they will pay. They don't want water flowing through their house. They don't want uh, smoke coming down the chimney because the chimney ain't clean. They don't, they don't want, you think Tits McGee, Little Miss Soccer Mom, wants her Range Rover not working in the middle of winter? My God, you charge up the yin yang. That's how you make six figs as a tradesman. So as my logic takes me. So you could go ahead and research online. I do more Bureau of Labor Statistics. These lists, I went through like five different lists. I'm like, these are all bullshit. You know, like, hey, chocolate taster, $80,000. Oh, shut up. All right. I would go Bureau of Labor Statistics, look at mean wages, average wages. Uh, that'll give you a starting point. Um, but long haul is just being a professional, not being a fuck up, and then maybe becoming an entrepreneur. All right. Good. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. Check out all the links to my books and podcasts and all the other content I produce down below. There's even donation buttons to the PayPals and the Patreons and the Amazon affiliate shopping link. If you don't want to give me money, you just want to shop and get me a commission. That's about it. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.